It's a digital music trends coverage of South by Southwest 2013, and it's really a pleasure to have here Katie McMahon, the VP of Sales and Marketing at the company Soundhound. So hi, Katie, and thanks for being on the show. How's it going? Great. Thank you very much. Cool. So it's a really nice day. There's some music in the background, and it's uh, really nice to talk about Soundhound. I mean, I've been using the, the service for a number of years now, so it's cool to actually meet somebody that works at the company and, and to talk about it. Um, so first of all, let's talk about the history of the company. Like, like I mentioned, I've been using it for, for quite a long while. So when did it start out? And, and uh, how long have you been around? Yeah, well, it's always lovely to meet an early adopter who started using Soundhound in the early days. You know, and our real moment of launch came when the App Store first launched in 2008. But the story is more of one of an evolution of a product and hitting milestones in terms of the feature richness yep. and the speed, the accuracy, and delighting the end user. And today, Soundhound has over 130 million users globally. Wow. So we're in that small club of very few applications that are downloaded at such high scale, but more importantly, it's the, the return usage of people really are engaged. It's not a one-time game that they've bought and then they go off after a few months and you never come back to it. And that's really important in terms of a user experience of why I come back and continue to use it. Of course. And uh, with international expansion uh, come and you know more and more stores being added to the, to the App Store by Apple and right. uh, more and more countries, uh, it comes like a challenge in the, in the tagging of, of the music as well. So how have you managed sort of the growth of the database and, and, and the ingestion yeah. of international uh, catalog as well? Yeah, and, and that's really important because while you need to have the, the massive hits, it's important in, in regional markets to likewise make sure you have local databases. And, and we work across um, every platform of major labels, independents, and we have, we have artists coming to us directly saying, please ingest my albums or my collection because I know if fans are, are trying to soundhound and, and you want to give them that result. Yeah. So it's a big part of our effort to continuously grow our database. Also, the other thing that we're heavily focused on is our live lyrics um, database, if you will, having songs, the lyrics, but making those live lyric eyes. So that's a soundhound feature where literally if I ID a song, if I'm standing in the coffee shop, the song information comes, the beautiful graphic, but that song's lyrics are moving in sync with the song at the moment in time. Yeah. And that is just a, a re-emergence of the, of the love for lyrics. Yeah, yeah sure. And do you guys power that service yourself or do you have a third? No, no, that, that's, that's a wholly owned and created in-house technology from Soundhound Inc. So to be able to continually take songs and make sure that the lyrics aren't static but they're live lyrics, that likewise is part of a, a growth internally in our, in our back-end database that the team of, of engineers are set across. And the same, the same thing on the licensing side, right? You, you license the, the right. tracks itself. Yes, that's correct. Okay, yeah. cool. Awesome. I didn't know that. And uh, so uh, one of the news that came out uh, a couple of weeks ago, was it a couple of weeks ago, last week, um, you know, talking about the, the, the radio space, which is a, yeah. a really interesting uh, angle for, for you because, you know, I know other competitors have, have gone into the, more the, the TV market, but a radio is such an untapped potential and a huge audience for music lovers that, right. you know, so often you hear a track and you sound hounded because right. you're not on a digital radio or, you know, you're still on a normal FM channel or whatever. And so what's the partnership all about? Uh, tell me about and it. That's perfect because you just articulated the exact use case that so much of our user base is already doing. And that's yeah. a key point. The user behavior does not have to get taught. It's already there. I, I hear a song on a radio. I know I sound hound it. I yeah. get my information. So we looked at that pool of use case and, and looked at an industry named radio, terrestrial traditional radio, and looked at the problems that radio is having in the digital age. So what's happened in terrestrial radio, when the internet came along, it, it threw radio for a loop, un, yeah. not understanding how to quickly go with the curve for monetizing. So the likes of a Pandora really ate into the radio industry's bread and butter. And bread and butter is who funds it, and that's advertisers and yeah. brands that want to reach. But what we know is that audio channel is still incredibly compelling. If you're in a car or you're listening to a personality, a talk show, or a radio host that has a two-hour show with country music as highlights, yeah. you're really invested. You trust that, that personality. You gain a lot of information. There's huge value there. So what we've done is partnered with uh, the U.S.'s biggest radio syndicate player. They're called Dial Global. Yeah. And what Dial understands is that our technology is that leapfrog potential on how 
radio can monetize. Yeah. So what we've done jointly is release something called Soundhound for Radio. Now this allows any program to asynchronously be identified. So what this means is during the broadcast at any stage you can sound hound and receive the intended result. Wow. Now if there's still music playing, if Taylor Swift is playing and you sound hound it, we will have product fidelity where there's the artist's name, the track, the lyrics, but part of the real estate in the result will go towards either the promotion or the brand advertiser. And to put a little color around this, I can give you the example that we just ran in the Super Bowl, where Dial Global has the broadcast rights for radio of um, calling the game, right? right? And you've got hundreds of thousands of people tuning in to listen to that radio event. Yeah. Meanwhile, Geico is coming in and sponsoring for getting their brand out. And the announcer can say, Soundhound, the broadcast in order for your chance to listen to Tim McGraw's special exclusive interview. So if you're a Tim McGraw fan and you can only hear it there, yeah. that's value to me. And um, you can apply to get free tickets to go to the ACM concert. Again, a value nugget. So yeah. it's a three-way win. It's a, it's a win for radio. It's a win for the brand advertiser. It's a win for SoundHound. And most importantly, though, it's the win for the end user who no, has no bother. Of course I want a SoundHound. Get it, click, click. Happy days. So that, that's exciting. We really think it can revolutionize radio. It, in essence, it makes radio clickable. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it's, it's super exciting in, in the... On the technology front, I'm, I'm just wondering, like, how, how does it work? Is, is there like a, an underlying audio fingerprinting that, or like some sort of like embedded signal that you add to the broadcast? Because of course, if you do it in real time, it's pretty tough to send the stream to sound hard fast enough for it right, to be able right. to recognize the track. Very perceptive. How, how does the magic work? Getting under the hood to our secret sauce and how we technically <laughs> pull out the, this magic, and, it, and part of it is, you know, in, in a proprietary um, solutions kit. Yeah. But you've hit on this is different than having a recorded track fingerprinted sitting in a database yeah. and um, you know synchronously matching it versus having real time on the fly fingerprint audio matching happen. So it, it, it did take new levels of technology and heavy investment to make it happen. Yeah, it's, it's great. And uh, you know, talking about uh, this, the, the, the radio play, so there's, there's a huge play on, radio dis on, on music discovery, of course, uh, uh, with any service uh, you know, of this type, and especially SoundHound. Uh, if you find that track that really gets you interested enough to take out your phone and right. SoundHound it, then that, that's a powerful thing. So, so how, do, how, how are you guys planning on expanding on the music discovery side of things? Uh, no, no, brilliant. So, of course, one of the, the most obvious use cases is to discover the music or often people will sound hound a track that they know is playing. Yeah. For example, during the Super Bowl, Beyonce is a halftime show. People know it's Beyonce, but when she played that third song, there was an emotional connection. You're like, God, I love that song. The ease of functionality on your device just to grab it, yeah. click buy, download to your device and listen to it is second to none. It's so quick and easy. It's delightful. Yeah. But to expand on that, right? So their music streaming services are coming in. How do you have a turnkey solution? Just boom, boom off to listening to it. Um, but also, increasingly, we see that us users that are, are music gurus or thought leaders or really pride their, their music collection yeah. or pride putting fodder into their Twitter uh, uh, stream or Facebook stream, yeah. they want to be able to talk about what they're, what they're doing in general. Yeah. So um, in a very smart move in our user interface, we enabled the share button to be yeah. very seamless. You can multi-share, you can auto-share instantly, and you can also add your own comments. Um, some other services don't even let you customize. We yeah. think it's really important for your voice to be like, hey, I'm downtown Austin, check this out, Boop, add a yeah. little commentary, one button, send. So SoundHound would, would be a massive producer of what I call shares off the back of your music moments, whether it's a song I knew about, rediscovered, side joke with a friend, and I zap that out. And the multiplier effect, when you add together the following ba the follower base and friend base yeah. off the back of a daily share from SoundHound can reach upwards to 10 million eyeballs. Wow. So it's a powerful, powerful tool, not just to instantly buy music or listen to it, to discover it, but to broadcast and amplify outward. Out, outside. outside, yeah. And, and you touched upon a feature that I actually hadn't thought about just because I've always used SoundHound as, as a way to really tag music that I didn't know. But uh, 
tagging music that you actually already know, yeah. it almost feels like some sort of a, a four square for audio in the yeah. sense that it's, it's broadcasting to other people what you're listening to without having to go through the hassle of exactly. actually writing down the artist name and the track name and, and, and all that kind exactly. of stuff. So do you, a, do you see a lot of that behavior amongst your users as well? We do. We see tons of it. Literally, upwards of 80, 90, 100,000 a day, these shares are going out. And again, that multiplier effect can reach onward. But then the beauty as the, as the receiver, I can have a one-tap experience and then it opens up SoundHound. So instantly, I can be listening to the preview of the song. I can see the lyrics. I myself can buy it or I can onward share it so suddenly it's a real lean in experience and I've connected right you, you've sent someone back in London uh, a share moment from, from sound you can do this on text you can do it on email as well if you want it one to one yeah. and I tap it I open it and suddenly you've connected through a, a rich a rich um, experience. Yeah, and you're talking about uh, London and, and, and maps are, are a big thing as well for SoundHound. So you've uh, recently partnered with Ardio to offer uh, a, you know, a second, you know, a, a yeah. sort of a mapping experience for, for your users that would allow them to work out what, what, what tracks have been played where. Exactly. And, and this is something that, you know, aside from just Ardio, is something that really taps into the data that you collect on what's been tagged uh, where and, and when. Uh, so what do, you, what, what do you think is the evolution evolutionary step in the use of this data and uh, do you think you can make the most of it as, as an individual company or do you think you're gonna open up so yeah, something yeah. in order to 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 get more companies to come in and, and make really amazing stuff with it well you're hitting on the topic of data and what SoundHound sits on in terms of how much information we know um, across music taste yeah. what time where when what people are are using identification for um, and, and that opens up a wealth, a treasure trove of insight. Yeah. Could it be very valuable to record labels to understand where do I put my um, A&R dollars? What artist is going to really break through? Yeah. And I'll tell you, inside of you know, in SoundHound, we have you know the hottest chart and the most tweeted chart, but we also have something called SoundHound Discoveries. And yeah. that's one of our charts, which we do this thing where we're, we're trying to wait how much a song gets radio played and discount that in order to bubble up songs that are for some reason really getting, getting a response. Again, no one is holding a gun to someone's head to say, go ID this. But for some reason, someone's pulling out their device, capturing that song. It could be a song that's be, being played on an audio, um, on a TV commercial. It could yeah. be a, a song from the 80s that has a reemergence and we can see that trend happen, right? So that's an example of where um, data is incredibly interesting. Yeah. But back to bubbling it up to the end user to really enjoy and, and dive into. Um, but I should mention that on SoundHound Discoveries, we, we're already predicting who will win the Grammys in two years' time. You know, wow. Three years back, we saw Lady Annabelle and bubble up. Two years ago, we saw Mumford & Sons bubbling up. And it, it's almost this lag time that then suddenly, boom, the Grammys is, is right there. Yeah. But to the point of um, the Maps feature, why this is so fun is we've always wanted to bring out exactly this experience where really it, it's music voyeurism. Yeah. Who's listening to what, where? And all you need to do is tap on it, open up that map, zoom, 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 and drill down literally to, to, to this town in Austin. We can see what it's getting ID'd ID right then and there. Yeah. It's really a fun, engaging, I can play it, I can listen to it, I can shrink the map, flip over to London, and see what's getting sound hunted there. And right. it, it's, it's music voyeurism for anybody that wants to discover new music or just learn what's getting played in, in Sao Paulo. It, yeah. it can be a total random moment mindless at times or a real lean in of like let me let me find some track that I otherwise never would have come across yeah well you should you should get your developers to do a, a weather map of uh, just uh, the central Austin area uh, over the past four or five days so that you can scroll through and see what tracks have been played in a specific yeah, moment of time time lapse to time lapse yeah, yeah that would yeah. be awesome uh, so let's finish by talking about the money of course you know it's uh, we have to talk about it uh, of course uh, Sound SoundHound uh, relies uh, mostly on, on advertising uh, right now and uh, so what are what, what are you seeing you know advertisers uh, doing with the platform uh, you know do you see more 
are people actually tuning into the idea of, of reaching people directly through yeah. SoundHound and and how do you think that will evolve in time? Yeah, well just to speak from the high level of what SoundHound Inc. does in terms of our, our business models, we are diversified across several revenue streams, yeah. one being licensing where our technology is used with, with some carriers around the world, for yeah. example, on um, a, a partnership API level. But inside of the SoundHound app that most everyone knows about, there are three models happening there. One would be the premium app. So yeah. if, you, if you don't want to see banner ads and you want la creme de la creme of an experience, then you plunk down your money and you buy the paid app. Yeah. The second stream would be affiliate revenue. And, and the, the most obvious example of that in the app would be I buy the song right away and we share in, in that upside. And SoundHound is a material vehicle for selling music. At, this, at that volume, we are pushing people through the door of the music store and ease of functionality to download it. I hear, heard a song, bought it, download it, I get on the plane, I listen to it. But the third area that, that you, you mentioned is um, the advertising. And in the past year, we've invested very heavily. We've, we've hired on senior management and built up a team. We've opened up offices in New York, LA, and Chicago to be direct touch points with brands, agencies, because we really, we really are lucky in that we're in this vertical that that is actually quite wide, and it's yeah. music, it's emotional. Every brand has some degree of touch point with music, and those brands that really want to reach users who are explorers yeah. want to come through SoundHound and offer that. And and the audio maps um, is a great example of it. Absolutely, no, it's, it's great to hear you know all the different verticals because of course uh, a lot of people's assumption and, and mine as well was like you know advertising, of course, you know, and then you. Of course, there's a wealth of other stuff that you can do with a platform that is not just that. And I've, I've always said, actually, that one day people will, would pay for the free version. Ironically, they'd pay to want to see ads what are actually great value-add experiences yeah. that happen to be sponsored by someone else. Yeah. And that, that's the shift that we're trying to be leaders in and making that, that experience that enables a company to monetize. We've got servers we've got to pay. Like, we've got yeah. expenses. As we grow, we have expenses. And an end user has a threshold to understand that. So the banner ad, people understand I'm getting something free, I'll see it. But how much better is it that they're leaning in and they're devouring a rich, rich experience and feature that value add that happens likewise to enable them to have endless, unlimited, free usage of this amazing product that they love. Absolutely. That's the golden, the golden nugget for an ad, ad model is people yeah. wanting it to the point where they had the, the paid version and they say, wait, I want I want that version to get those features. Yeah, to so the point that like you could have a even a more invasive ad once somebody uh, you know tags something and uh, that says, you know, this company is sponsoring for you to be able to listen to the whole track if you want or something exactly. like that. So that's that's exactly right. There's, there's a lot of options there. Uh, and just I wanted to finish by talking about you know the evolution of the, of the company as as a product uh, cross platform. Uh, there's so many places that you need to be in and develop for. Uh, what are your objectives for for this year in terms of both uh, you know availability of where you want to be yes. and uh, product features? Brilliant. So. SoundHound Inc. has a, a mission to create revolutionary technologies that inspire how we interact with connected devices. Yeah. And we will enable all sound to be relevant, a utility, contextual, and onward engaged. So what I mean by that, take the example of music. You can engage with it right away. We've nailed that. We've got the world's fastest, most enjoyable music recognition as a moment. We've just elongated this into broadcast with SoundHound for radio, and that's taking an example of a, a DJ can be chattering away. That's not a music clip, but I can SoundHound that and suddenly have an experience. So take that to the next level. If I'm walking down the street and I, I hear a certain sound that's getting piped out of you know, a, a cafe or a local market, I can interact with it. Sound also includes the stuff that comes out of our lungs. And you know you can sing hum into SoundHound and get a recognition moment. But really, a fundamental shift in how we talk, work with computing devices. The last five years, it's been all about this, touching yeah. and tapping. In essence, we've, we've Googled with our fingertips. 
Soundhound Inc. will revolutionize how we interface and it's going to be heavily through voice. We're going to retire the finger and the thumb. And there's obviously the big players that have put the stake in the ground to have a shift away from typing to have voice input. But the challenge in that are, are so complex and that's why there's not been a delightful experience to date yeah. because not only is voice to text to challenge to make sure that transcription when I say I need two tickets to Toronto on September 22nd that is a challenge in terms of what did you mean T-W-O or T-O-O or so that all by itself is challenging. But then you layer on top of it the natural language understanding. Yeah. And once again, on top of that, the artificial intelligence. That's a challenge altogether to get yeah. right. So I can we've, tell you we've that... We've all seen that to services like Siri that haven't quite got, got it right yet. I mean, they work pretty well, but when, it, when you really need them, they, they still tend to fail. So inside of Soundhound Inc., I can just give you a, a slight nod when you ask, what are we doing as a company? What's the future of our company? I'm showing you that we are really heavily invested to be a, the company of consequence in the mobile computing era that enables true natural language communication with connected devices. And I think we're on a path to, to be there. Um, right now we're very concentrated on the SoundHound music search and discovery app and experience. We're monetizing and we're growing that user base phenomenally. But what you should um, sit back and, and, and wonder is that they, will this company come out and be even even bigger? Yeah, bigger, wow. Well, I'm, I'm absolutely intrigued. And if you don't know about SoundHound or don't have the app, you should absolutely head on to the, uh, the uh, iOS store. I know, of course, I'm, I'm sure you're on Android as well. That's right. Uh, on Android as well. And download SoundHound and check it out. Uh, thanks so much, Katie, for your time. Thank you very much, Andrea. Nice to see you here in Austin. Great, thank you.